Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to get back to the data breach that Congressman Huizinga discussed with you earlier. Can you describe how the CFPB found out about this breach? Uh, so another employee identified a specific indicator. It was reported to our team. We brought them together. In the breacher to CC'd their manager in an email, and the manager caught it. Is that correct? Um, I, I don't want to go into anything related to the investigation, but it was okay. another manager. Okay, and how long between that manager pushing this breach up the chain did you notify the quarter million Americans and 45 companies involved in the breach about their exposure? How long did it take? So with this, we found some documents that did have consumer names. No, no information like so. Was it 24 hours? Was it 72 hours? Or was it like two months? Well, we, we, don't ha we didn't have their contact information. So you had their personal identifiable information, but you didn't have their contact information? Yeah, we, we just had very okay. few pieces. But you didn't notify it. the companies like you probably should have. We best did, practice. yeah. So what we did is we partnered with the companies whose customers... How long did it take you to partner work? with them? Um, I can look at the timeline, but as soon was as... Was it 72 hours? The answer is no, but I mean, uh, it wasn't um, 72 hours. I think we tried our best to identify where we had... Okay, so it wasn't 72 them. hours. And again, you're responsible for enforcing... Uh, cybersecurity uh, breaches, and if a company, we are not actually, well, you yeah. you sue your you have. Well, we do not against, enforce breach notification uh, laws. Correct, but when you find companies for violating best practices, those companies are considered to be in egregious breach if they do not notify the the consumers that were breached within 72 hours. It's we'll just move on. Um, no, that's not it, accurate, but I'm happy to follow up. Okay, so if a company's breached uh, and they don't notify anybody within 72 hours, you're not going to consider that an aggravating factor in, in whether to find them and how much? Well, so generally speaking, yes. the, the safeguards rule that governs financial institution breaches is enforced by other agencies. They're separately... Okay, so let's just... Uh, uh, but you're, let me just say, though, this is a very in serious here. issue. Um, we have already please allow the gentleman to answer the question. Uh, it's uh, if his, he would answer the question. It's the gentleman's would, five minutes. Um, okay, so I find it an egregious uh, breach of best cybersecurity practices to have this information available to this individual in the way that it is. Do you believe, in retrospect, that the information should have been siloed and it should not be easy to email a document? I mean, yeah, you, so we are looking at making sure we already have systems in place so that there is not the ability to transfer that. The, the issue can sometimes be is when there's communications with the entity. So sometimes that is ingested. How in many people have been fired because of uh, this data breach? Well, so, the gentleman paused for just a moment while we fix the clock. Sure. I think I was at like 240. Do we know how much time? 240. How much time was left? The gentleman can continue. Okay, thank you. You want me to answer? Yeah. I, I just, it's really concerning that you have this color of law, this theoretical authority to force these businesses to give you this information, and then you um, are unable to protect it, and the individuals that have been breached, they have no recourse. They're not going to get some settlement. They're not going to get any money. Uh, I already have a number of instances where people whose data were, were breached, uh, these criminals have filed um, unemployment insurance claims, and they have already had, uh, they've already been damaged. And there's no recourse because you're a governmental entity operating under the color of law. And, and, and I say operating under the color of law, obviously, because there's a, a Supreme Court decision uh, that we're expecting here pretty soon. What, what, re what would you tell the individual that has been damaged by the CFPB's incompetence as it relates to this cybersecurity breach, what is their recourse? How will they, how will they be made whole? Well, so... Are you going to write a this, check? Th this is a very serious issue, and one of the things we're doing is for consumers who are customers of the entity, we are working with the financial institution to figure out fortunes. Are you going to make them pay... The, for the breach? No, of course okay. not. For, well, of course not. You make other companies pay for the breach. Well, Please allow the gentleman to ask the it's question. It's the gentleman's time. So, so you're not going to write a check to make these people whole? We are working with the institutions, and fortunately, the information that was transferred on an unauthorized basis okay. did not have indicia of risk of identity theft. But I take your point that, of course, the data that is collected must be protected. This was a serious problem. 
The employee that was responsible, I can't go into details, they are not currently right. an employee. I'll employee. reclaim my time. Is that the best way to do it? Um, so, Director Chopra, you are required to appear before this committee twice a year, meaning we will likely see you again in about six months. And with the pending Supreme Court decision on the constitutionality of the CFPB, it may very well be your last appearance before our committee. Um, please try to do the least amount of damage as possible between now and then. The American people would really appreciate it. Consumer Protection Financial Bureau. The quarter million consumers are not protected. You cause them uh, damage and they will never be made whole. With that, uh, Madam Chair, I yield back. 